it's 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 eleven o two. Um, I I do have a I, I do have a reputation for being slightly late and 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 talking for for longer than is strictly speaking necessary. But welcome <laughs> to our I'm losing track now. Fifth potentially fifth no sixth sixth virtual bridge session, uh, which is awesome. And today today I am delighted to. To move, I was going to say, move away from the Microsoft focus that we've had over the last few sessions and go Google Bye! <laughs> with James from uh, Fife College, who's going to share with us um, some of the work he's doing with uh, G Suite for Education, which is the Google platform, which, although it's only being used in a few colleges and some universities in, in, a, in, in a partial way, it has a much greater impact in the schools community. So without further ado, I will hand over to James and James. James will tell us his story about Google at Fife College. Hi everyone, uh, as Kenny's already introduced, my name's James and I'm from Fife College. What I'd like to do today is just really casually show you how I've been using G Suite. Um, and first of all, I'll need to share my screen across. So what I've done for today is I've set up uh, an effective way. <laughs> I am going to just go back up to this waffle icon at the top, which is up here. Um, and like I said, I'm predominantly going to be using Classroom, which you can find in this sort of waffle menu up here. I've got it pinned to my Chrome. Um, for everyone else that's not done that, it would be in here. So in using this as a VLE, um, what should pop up for yourself would be a blank screen here, presumably with no classes if you've not been using this before. But for myself, I've been using this extensively for the past two years, and um, this is on my classes for this academic year so far. And what I have made is an artificial class for today to sort of show you the inner workings of how we can dispense some of this work and things too. Um, I have got permission for one of my other classes um, to show you a more fuller class later on, which has got a lot of work in mm -hmm. it. Um, and a lot more students, because I have some artificial students in here as well, one of which is Alex, who I believe is in the stream just now and watching <laughs> as well. So if you do need to set up yourself a new class for the first time, um, a lot of G Suite is based on sort of simple, sort of accessible parts, and this whole screen will be blank, apart from this plus icon up here. So if you need to make yourself a class, you can just click on here, and you want to create a class, presumably as a sort of tutor or a lecturer or a teacher. Um, and you can fill in your own details here. It might be that you're teaching in primary school and this is class one or class two. It might be that you specifically are a lecturer within a sort of HE environment and you want to call this, you know, HNC Psychology A or something like that. Um, I imagine within your own sort of institution, you'll have various bits that you can fill in with all these parts here. But for today's session, I've set up this classroom, which is called the Bridge Sessions Classroom. Uh, and I've hypothetically going to be using it as a National 5 psychology course, um, just because that's one of the things I'm most familiar with. So first thing that we can see here is it doesn't matter how you're accessing Google Classroom, whether it is through the Chrome browser or there are apps available for it on iOS and on Android, um, it's predominantly made up for my view of four tabs across the top here that you can see. Uh, and for student views, it's made up of three tabs. These students don't get to see the marks section. <laughs> just for me. So the first tab we've got here, which is called the stream, is very, very similar to most people's idea of social networking and to avoid using the word Facebook. Uh, this is very much your news stream of what's going on. So anything that's posted in the class, any student work that I decide to put in as a sort of an assignment or a project or as some materials, it's going to come up in here. And I've sort of started to populate this class already. Um, so you'll see some of the notifications coming up in here. But as I say, this is a quite a new artificial class, so it's not that full just now. The students um, can also post in here as well. And we can see already that there's two class comments from two of my artificial students, one of which being Alex and another one being Mark. Um, so first thing first, if you, you know, you'll need to get your students populated and sort of enrolled into your classroom. And one way to do that would be to head away from this stream tab up here along to the people tab. And you can see I've already got some students in this class as well. Now you can add them all in manually by sort of clicking on invite students and you could import, uh, mass import the details from your um, your registry system within your institution or God forbid you type them all in one at a time, you know, by hand. And um, this is a kind of long winded way to do things I imagine. And 
the way I like to do this is to sort of empower students to do it themselves and self-enroll themselves. So if you head back to the stream, when students load up Google Classroom for the first time, they'll be seen with this option to join a class instead of create a class. And all they have to do in that circumstance is put in the reciprocal class code that goes alongside the class you'd like them to join in. And if you're in the classroom that you've set up, this code is available here. So what I tend to do is I introduce the software to my students up on the big sort of presentation screen. Um, most of them have got the app within a couple of minutes or they're on a Chrome browser and they access it. And it's just a case of popping in this code and that will then populate them into the classroom and enroll them. Something that's a useful tool that's been added in the past sort of six months is if a student now enrolls late, so after you've started to put assignments in or work, any new students will also receive new copies of that work as well and it will backdate for them, for them too, um, which is quite a useful tool. So the stream, like I said, is very much just a news feed. Um, it's about all the posts and all the sort of work and all the comments from students that are going to be coming up. Um, but what's also in here is an inbuilt calendar, which is specific to each of your classes that you're running. Um, this calendar will give you a sort of update of any work that's going to be handed in soon. And um, we can see we've got a couple of bits that I've posted in here earlier on. There's a, a conformity and social psychology piece of work, which is due tomorrow at seven o'clock at night. And there is a short quiz that I'm going to show you later on, which is due on Friday at one o'clock. So given this is an artificial class, we don't have many posts on our stream, so I'm not going to spend too much time spending in here. Um, most of my work is done inside this classwork section here, which is our second tab. Um, this is where I can put in materials, whether they're static or dynamic, um, uh, interactive or solely just for people to have a look at. Um, and I've got a section at the top here, I tend to put up some resources. First thing I usually put in is a, a unit spec for the course that I'm teaching on, so the students have got a a clear sort of sight of what their overall sort of teaching is for the, the course that they're on and perhaps what the end goal might be. Um, something else I've got in here today is a link to a website which has been built, which has got the whole of this National 5 course on it, which is a, some static content. So just very briefly, this is a, a site which has been built for that purpose, which is again is built on Google Sites as well, which is involved in the G Suite package uh, and it's free to use. It's basically just a nice big site builder for based on drag and drop templates and things like that too. But I could speak about that for a whole other two hours another day. Um, so yeah, there's some resources and some materials that have been posted in here and I'm gonna go through putting some assignments in just in a second. So anything you'd like to put in this classwork section is really easy to put in. There's just this big plus create button up here um, we can put in material, which is static, so it can just be something for students to access and view itself. Um, or what we could put in is something that we'd like the students to do as a piece of work. So we can title these assignments, so we might call it, you know, work one with some terrible spelling. Um, and we can put in some instructions here. It might be that you've got some specific things that you'd like students to do. We've got different marking options that we can pop in as well. We can decide if we want to send this to all the students or just a select number of them. And it's just as simple as unchecking all students and saying, well, I only want to send this piece of work to Alex and Diane. Um, but for now, we'll keep it as all students. We can decide how we're going to mark this, what the total score might be. Um, and again, I'm just going to put in 10 just now. Um, and I'm going to very briefly go into this marking category section here too. So there, we can set weight in scores, which um, are in the setting section that will pop through in a minute. Um, we can have a look at what due date we're going to do. So a week calendar pops up here. So it's nice and easy to sort of see when work's going to be handed back in. And you can select specific times for them to come in as well. And if you've set up some topics or some sort of subheadings within your classwork section, we can decide here which part of this topic it's going to go in. But for the meantime, I'm going to get rid of this pretend one that's using just now. Um, and I'm going to show you the <laughs> one that I've done already, which is all set up and good to go. So one I've got saved here is conformity to. I'm going to be issuing this out to some of the people in the class today. Um, and it's just a case of clicking on edit here. And you can see this is exactly the screen we had a minute ago. So I've got a title here. I've got some instructions about what I'd like my students to do. Um, I can pop in some links as well by just clicking on add and I can just put in my hyperlink here if I'd like to send my students to a specific website or even just link in a video from YouTube. If I don't want to, you know, 
open up another tab and go into YouTube myself here and search for a video that way, I, I can just open up YouTube through this G Suite package here and stay inside my single tab and have a look for conformity videos on YouTube. And again, it should just pop up with a search engine here as I would usually do if I was on YouTube. And I can simply select one of these videos and add it in. And if not, I had to leave the classroom at any point, which is really useful for me instead of having, you know, 20 tabs open up at the top and things saved in bookmarks and bits and pieces like that. Um, so we can add in links, we can add in sort of PDF files, which is a lot of the time I'll be doing because I've got a lot of journals that I'd like my students to have a look at and, you know, be exposed to to some degree, even at this national five level. It's important for them to see a, an academic journal and what it looks like and Hopefully by the time they've furthered their academic career, they can come at least a bit more familiar with these scary things that are called journals and because it can be often intimidating. So you can put them in here and like I say, I've just got a PDF file that's popping up. And some of the options we've got when we put in files is we can have the students only been able to view that file so they can't make any edits to it and it's just a single shared copy that they can view. We can make a single copy of something which everybody has editable access to, which is good for collaborative work. So for example, like the document that Kenzie's got up, which has got the sort of the links for all the sessions in the bridge sessions. Um, or we can make a single copy for each of the individual students within the class, which is good for dispensing work in terms of assignments, which is what I've done today for this piece of work. So I've got a copy for each of the students that are in here. And something I've done in the background in Google Docs is just make up a wee template file. Um, so it's just got some titles and some pictures. It's got a bit of a set of instructions here to follow on from um, what's on the instructions that are in the assignment itself. Um, and it's got some sections that I'd like the students to fill in and return back to me. So because I've selected this option here, all the students are going to get their own copy. Um, I've also got some lecture slides in here as well, which are again all in one space and just pop open and then you tab. I've got the edit view for these because they belong to me, but students will just see them as an uneditable and sort of view only file. So I'm gonna put a quick date on this for next week or maybe even just for Monday and we'll just default the time to 12 o'clock. So I am gonna add what's called a rubric on here as well, um, which is a kind of Americanism if you're not familiar for basically a marking scheme or a, a sort of a marking document. So to add on a rubric for marking, we just simply, we can import them from Sheets if we've already got them, which is Google's own version of Excel, or we can reuse a rubric from another assignment or from a different class if those marking schemes are standardized to some degree, or we can simply create a new one, which we can reuse later on to in another class. And it's just as simple as clicking on create rubric. And for this piece of work, uh, we can add in criterion, we can add in further descriptions and a set of marking that goes along with that too. So to make it really easy for today, I'm just going to put in two of them um, with a pass or fail. And you'll see how this works quite simply. So um, part of this piece of work is our students are being asked to look at individualistic cultures and collectivist cultures. So I'm going to just have one as achieved. And I'm going to have one point allocated to this outcome because they've effectively completed this bit on individualistic cultures and I'm going to have a zero point allocated for someone who not achieved. And that way I should have a clear indication of who's passed and who's failed when it comes into my marking. So this is criterion one. I can add in a second criterion. We're going to do one for collectivist cultures and we'll do the same. We'll do one for oh, scroll wheels going mad. I'm going to add in one for achieved and add in a separate one for, I think we called it not achieved. Yeah, we'll call it not achieved again. Uh, you can add in as many of these as you like. If your question is going to be out of I don't know, 100 marks, you could go on all day and have quite a robust marking scheme here. Um, we're just going to make a simple one today, which has got two outcomes on it that I'd like students to pass in both circumstances. So you can see now our total at the top has changed to out of two, and the more of these criterion that we add in, it's going to accumulate at the top here. All we do is click on save, and that's going to attach that rubric to this piece of work here. So not only will I be able to view this in a minute when I dispense this work and I'm then marking some other work that comes in, but what's really important for me is that the students get to see this rubric as well. So they're, as well as having a set of instructions about what I'd like them to do for a piece of work, they've got a really clear understanding of how they're going to be marked on this piece of work as well. Um, 
which is great if you're a student because you know exactly what you're being asked to do. Um, so one of the final things I'd like to show you in this sort of assignment view is a really sort of useful tool mm -hmm. which was in beta up until about three or four months ago and has now went to, uh, it's been pushed out across the board, is originality reporting. So this is kind of like your turn it in or whatever it is that you're using within your own institution for checking in originality or plagiarism checker too. So in beta we had unlimited originality tools but what we've got now is three assignments per classroom, so I've had to be a wee bit more tactful about when I'm using these and for what bit of work, um, whereas before it was great to just put them on every bit of work that came out because I could check all the originality stuff and this is now a paid function that comes into uh, G Suite for Education, but we've got plenty because this is a brand new and artificial class. So we'll just press continue to enable originality check-in and I think we can update our score here to points and um, what's going to come through on the rubric uh, already and we can just assign this work. Now if I'm not ready to assign this work just now I can save it as a draft and keep it for another day um, or I can schedule it to come out later on as well. I can schedule it to happen at a later date this evening or even further on down the line if I'm being really proactive from my sort of planning uh, for my classes. We're just going to assign this just now so we can see how it works. We're going to assign this to all the students in the class. It's going to pop up in their stream immediately, as it says here. And the sheer waiting time for this is clearly just a... Oh no, there we go. It's probably to do with my poor Wi-Fi connection until my extender gets plugged in. So we can now see that this piece of work has been added into the classroom. And we've got conformity too. And, and I'm going to quickly have a look at that just now. I believe Alex, who's in the stream, is had this bit of work dispensed to him. And he's going to do a wee bit of proactive plagiarism here and return this work to me in a second. We'll pop back in and have a look at that. So in the meantime, what I've got sort of Blue Peter style is one that I'd done earlier on. So we've got this piece of work, which is conformity one. And in terms of what's in it, it's very similar to conformity two. It's got some other journals. It's got a template file that uh, each student got their own copy of. Um, and it's got some videos in here as well. So we can see that someone has handed this bit of work in, even though it's not due till tomorrow, what a proactive student. And we've still got two students who have not handed this work in. So um, since this, been, this student here has been proactive and sort of handing things in before the deadline, which is great, um, we'll be proactive and mark it for them as well. So in terms of marking, um, we simply click on the bit I've just seen there. Uh, we can see the students have handed in as one. Alex is the person who's handed his work in. And Diane and Mark have still got this work to hand in for tomorrow. So we can have a look at Alex's work simply by clicking on it. And we've, again, not really left the browser. Um, we're still staying here. And here's Alex's work just now. So he's filled in a, a template file that was a, a sort of summary almost of the Ash Line study, if you're familiar, from 1951, even though the journal I've got is from 1952, which rubs me up the wrong way. Um, I've never been able to find an original 1951 copy um, without paying through the teeth for it. So Alex's work's here. He's filled in all sort of parts of the AIM method results and some of the strengths and limitations in here. And very much, if you're not familiar with Google Docs, it is a very standard sort of text editor or sort of word processing um, piece of software that's cloud-based and online as well. So I can see that Alex has put a wee bit about background here and he's got some grammar checks. I can say that actually, I think you should change it to this here um, and suggest edits for Alex to do. Um, and I, everything pops up in a wee comment on the side here. Once Alex feels that he's resolved this issue, if he needs to, he can just click on the tick and that will disappear. Um, I'll get a nice wee notification for that later on as well to say Alex has amended any of the changes that I'd like them to do. Um, and I can leave comments on this as well and say, no, okay, but I work here, Alex. And you can see my wee work bank was coming up there already of things I've already said, look, great work, well done. And um, there's a comment, and I wrote great twice for some reason. And Alex can resolve that as well. That will highlight for him what's going on. I can add global comments as well. I'm seeing this is you know, a great piece of work overall here. And, and the students can post back on this as well and have sort of back and forward dialogues with yourself. If it's something which is, you know, remediation or, um, you know, you'd like them to change something or even have a discussion about what the piece of work's about as well, which is really great. I have a lot of long conversations with students in this comment box here and the chat, which is built into Google Docs as well. If I directly want to edit something, I can just click on this tab up here as well. Um, just now we've been suggesting and leaving some comments, um, but I can directly edit this document as well. 
So once I've done sort of marking this, which is not a sort of out of 10 or out of 5 or an overall score piece, this is just a piece of work that I'd like the students to have done in this circumstance and had a look at the Ash Line study as it's mandatory for the, the National 5 course. I can say that Alex has done sufficient work here, so I'm just going to return this back to him and we can see that um, just get an option to return it back. What I'm actually going to do just now is not, because I'm going to leave it in the marking section to show you later on. But when we're done, we can just return work back to Alex. Um, also in this view, which is really good to save us have to go back into the classroom and then select another student if they've also handed in some work, is we can quite quickly switch between students and the work here. James, sorry. Um, just, just to say, we're running into the last five or six minutes. Wait. <laughs> just, just, just saying. That's all right. I've clearly been yapping far too much about this. Um, so we're not going to hand Alex this bit of work back. What we are going to do is go back into the classwork section and have a look at the plagiarism tool, which Alex has done on this piece of work, thankfully. We can see he's also handed this one in proactively, and we'll get to some marking and some plagiarism. So again, we can just click on Alex's piece of work here because he's handed it in. And we can see our rubric has popped up on the side here of marking guide effectively. So if I scroll down to Alex's work and say, actually, yeah, I believe he's, you know, oh, well, he's done a great job here. He has definitely done the individualistic culture bit. I can mark that as one over one, and that's going to pop up here. Uh, and if I go down to the collectivist section, I can say, oh, well, look, he's done a great job here after reading that as well, and left some comments too, and I can see Alex has he's passed this section too. And you'll see this updates once I press enter. Um, his overall mark as well, which is now 2 out of 2. So when I return this piece of work done in a minute, it's going to come up with score automatically, which makes for marking really, really quick. But something I can see straight away, because we turned plagiarism checker on or originality checking on, is I can see straight away that there's three you know, flagged passages in here too. So very much like turn it in, we can see the overall document, which is highlighted for the sections that are, and Alex has done exactly what I asked him to do, copied something in straight from the internet, so we can see um, what it looks like in terms of the, so we can we can check exactly where the web matches are here. So this is from verywellminded.com, and it will take us to see the students' work that's flagged, and again, the, the web search, which is also flagged up and matches it. We can check overall for a percentage, and this is 94% flag. I don't know how it's not the other 6%, probably just my template. Um, but we can say that this is clearly some plagiarized work, and in fact, I'm going to be giving him a zero for both of these. And probably some sort of comment that says, Alex, I can't believe you turn in his work back done. So that was really briefly the marking and uh, the plagiarism tool, because clearly I've been yapping far too much about Google, um, which I definitely don't do on a day to day basis. Um, so we can see Alex has got his work back now. Uh, there's also a tick here to say that he has handed it in and I've returned it to him, returned it to him too. And I think the last thing I wanted to show you, because I'm not going to get to show people Hangouts today, is this these last two tabs here in Google Classroom. So we've got People, which is a fairly boring tab. It's just showing us the students which have enrolled on this course um, and any of the teachers that are enrolled as well. We can add in other teachers for IV purposes, which is what some of our lecturers have been doing. Or we could add in co-teachers if there's perhaps two people teaching on one course, which is kind of useful as well. But finally, what's really important for me in this sort of remote learning um, situation that we're all in with this COVID virus is this mark section. Um, this again is an artificial classroom, so there are only three pieces of work in here. Usually in my classes, there is a lot more work because we've been using it for the whole year. And this gives me a really quick view of who's handed in work and who's not who's handed in late as well comes up here too. So for example, if um, Alex has handed this work in late, it would come up handed in, but also a section underneath that said handed in late and how late it was. And if he was somebody that had consistently been handed in work late, I'd have a very quick overview session here that could say, well, Alex, you know, every bit of work that Alex has handed in has been late or by an unmarked circumstance. Um, what this also does in this big sort of built-in basically spreadsheet is that you can add up an overall mark for all your students and that overall mark can be sort of altered and accessed in this settings section up the top if you scroll all the way down we can either mark as category weighting so I can put informative work weights at 20% or summative work weights at 50 and I can change all these percentages to whatever I feel is appropriate for each of the classes that we're in um, or we can 
change this so it's just the total points. So all the cumulative points for each piece of work add up to the end and that's what would be displayed as this student score. Something that's interesting that I've been using this year is you can either turn on so that students can see or not see this overall score. Um, some of the classes I usually give them it as an option and a lot of them have decided this year that they want to see their own score and how they're getting on for the classes. One sort of big overall cumulative sort of number or indication of how they're getting on in class, um, which I've found quite interesting. Um, but as I say, some of them choose to do that and some of them don't. And that's displayed up here as an overall mark. So let's just quickly mark Alex's work and say he got six hypothetically for that. Um, once it's saved as a draft and returned to him, can leave some comments again if I need to. I should update his overall mark here as well because I've weighted it and it's now at 70%. So bear in mind that about five minutes ago, I think Kenji came on and said we're in the last five minutes. I'll probably wrap up what I'm doing there and uh, I'll certainly video myself later on, I think, uh, about how to use Hangouts and things like that, doing any of the other bits that I've missed out. And I'll post them in the virtual bridge session as well. Um, yeah, okay. Quick overview of Google Classroom. So um, it might be easier if you stop share uh, on your screen. <laughs> uh, stop share. <laughs> so, so James, James gave a very in-depth, quick overview. Like I'll be watching the video to to pick up um, on on all the bits he covered. We're close to running over time because we started a little bit late. Does anyone have any questions for for James? And it's like he's right there. This is the chance. Like, just unmute yourself and ask him something. Yeah, I think definitely unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. I've got a wealth of chat logs to have a quick look through here. Um, just in a general one, a general question, if I may, James, what made you choose Google Classrooms over anything else? Are you a Google head or, you know, did you try it and you thought it was great or was it just your natural inclination? So self-admittedly, uh, I am a bit of a sort of Google head, to be honest with you. Very much uh, 10 years ago, you had these people who were Apple fanatics and stuff. Um, I will put my hands up and say that, definitely. Um, I, you know, I've got a Pixel phone and I'm on a Chromebook just now. I'm sort of full embrace of the Google Home system in my house. But that's only kind of snowballed in the past two or three years, to be honest with you. I initially was using G Suite by itself, personally, uh, before I became a lecturer. I was using it in a, a business that I was running at the time. I had my own domain account and was sort of running it through that. And the reason I got that was because um, it was my own business and I was trying to do things as cheap as possible. And I didn't have as much sort of finances to spend on things like buying into Microsoft and buying Word and Excel and all these other things. And what was made available to me was some free, really easy to use tools. Uh -huh. um, so I very much snowballed into it that way. And when I came into lecturing, um, I found they had some software for using as a VLE, which I was really comfortable with and using because it was very much in line with the sort of accessibility that had been used on G Suite already. So for me, it's about, I don't think G Suite does anything that Microsoft doesn't do. I don't think it's got any particularly fancy bells or whistles in comparison. For me, it's about accessibility and how easy it is to use and kind of familiarity with a lot of the students that I speak to anyway. Um, but yeah, I will self-admittedly say that I'm a bit of a Google head to be honest with you. Great, thank you. James, can I ask a question? Um, what do you use to communicate with students? Uh, if you need to talk to them, like do you use Teams or Zoom or Hangouts or your opinion? Or as a group or? As a group. As a group, I use, I've been using Hangouts uh, sort of this past two weeks. Um, I can communicate very much like Zoom is just now with the groups of up to about 50 people. Um, and they can access that just through the Chrome browser like we're doing just now in Zoom. There's also an app which they can get on their phone, which is you know great for young people because they love apps and so easy accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, and you also use that on a one-to-one -one basis as well. There's a chat dialogue version where I can have individual sessions with students, but I can also use it in group settings like we're doing just now. And it's been working really well this week. Um, yeah. I've done about 10 or 12 lectures from home, so it's been really good for me to use without having to buy into the full Zoom package, which I feel I kind of might do anyway after using this today, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. James, I came in late to the, the conversation. Unfortunately, I was in another call earlier on. I was hoping to see a bit about using Gradebook. Was that covered at all? Uh, Gradebook is unfortunately just the Americanism on G Suite. It was that final section that I was looking at, which was called Marks um, in the Classroom tab. So it's that okay. final sort of almost Excel spreadsheet looking bit, which gives a big overview of all your students' work and uh, 
whether they've been handing things in late and what their yep. score is and that general overall calculation of a grade at the end as well. Um, if you're opening it up in America, it'll be called grade book. And if you're opening it okay. up, it's called marks. Um, yep. So they're very much the same thing. Hopefully you caught that. I didn't. <laughs> I missed that bit. Is this the, the webinar recorded anyway and downloadable? It is. Yeah. Great. Um, I'll go back to it afterwards. Brilliant. Thanks very much. No yeah. Before I, I officially close this session, although you can stay on if you want to have a chat with James, um, if, if James is still around. Um, <laughs> um, does anyone have a final question um, around the use of, of, of Google uh, that you might want to, to pose to James? He does like tough questions, I should say. He likes challenge. Like find something really gritty and like difficult for him to, to come back on because, you know, he likes that. He's always up for a challenge. I can see. I, ha I have an easy question, though. <laughs> if okay. nobody uh, see uh, how I invite students um, to Google Classroom. Um, they are just um, sending them emails with my class code. Is there any other um, options I can do? Any easier options? I can maybe choose students from my people tab and then just send them code somehow. Oh, yes. So if you go to your people tab, um, what you can do is click on the plus icon. And mm -hmm. if you can copy and paste their emails into there, it will automatically populate your class with those people. All Would they know? know? Would they be notified that they were yeah. enjoyed? All oh, right. Okay. With a, a simple yes or no button in an email. And if they click yes, it will populate them in. And if they press no, it will remove them from that data set. Oh, that's, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> Right, excellent. Um, I should say there's a, a link that I, I will share with everyone um, afterwards inside the program. Google have produced a whole set of, of notes, aids, guides around teaching from home. Um, and it's a lot of tips about delivering via Google Hangouts, um, but any, any sort of platform would do. Every, it's relevant to a whole host of different areas. Um, it's called, uh, if, you, if you Google Google Teach at Home, um, you, you'll find the link, but I'll, I'll share it later on. I just don't have it to hand. Thanks, James. Really appreciate it for today. Um, I, I'm sure everyone will be re-watching that video um, to pick up on all the parts because you covered quite a lot there. It, you just, it, 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 it was very, very good um, and, and definitely worth a, a re-watch. Um, tomorrow, uh, we will be having another session at 11 o'clock. Um, this is where I kind of pretend that I, I remember what tomorrow's sessions was. And, and I, I remember all of the sessions really um, but somebody's, somebody's going to remind me exactly what it is. Um, James is going to be talking about worms. Worm, worms, that's it. How could I forget worms? <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a slightly technical thing, but it's kind of interesting. We should also dip into the tech every now and again, um, talking about how he develops custom reports for Moodle uh, to gauge student activity. So it, it's an interesting chat. Right, until then, um, please hang on if you want to just hang back for a coffee and a chat. But uh, until then, uh, I will see you all tomorrow, hopefully, and more potentially, um, and uh, for any other future Virtual Bridge session. Thanks again, James. Thanks everyone for joining, and uh, stay safe. Bye.